Okay, we're in week four. <clears throat> we're gonna cover the material in week four. Uh, that is we're gonna be present lecture. We're gonna present examples. There's gonna be supplemental exercise for you to work on and some sage code. It's so typical for each section that we do of the notes. And what's typical is we give you a short lecture. Um, unfortunately, what happens to a lot of students when they have a lecture, it's, the problem with a lecture is really, they don't learn much through the lecture. They hear things, but they're not comprehending what's gonna be asked of them. That's why we go through examples. We present the examples to you. And then after giving those examples to you, it's really important that you try problems on your own. And we give you a problem set to try on your own with answers, of course. And um, if you have trouble after you know all that study, uh, please come by and see me and I'll try to help you out with the material. So what we're gonna do in week four, we're gonna do this shifting, reflecting and stretching a function. We're typically even a parent graph and then a parent graph, we're gonna be shifting it, reflecting it, or stretching it, all right? So we talk about vertical and horizontal shifts. We'll talk through this at the whiteboard later. We talk about reflections in a coordinate axis. That's either the x-axis or the uh, y-axis. We'll talk about that. We also talk about non-rigid transformation. Basically a stretching, either horizontal or vertical, all right? Now when I say stretching, it also includes the concept of a compression. All right, and we go through examples and certainly I realize this might seem abstract to you until we start to visualize. My understanding though with the visualization is you're gonna be given a parent function. This is a parent, by the way, it's called F. There'll be different parents to deal with. And what we do with F is we basically move it around. All right, so for example, someone says, oh, what happened to this guy right here? Well, you know what? You may not know what happened to it until you really start discussing the points on the curve and seeing something happen to it. And certainly we'll discuss that for the problems that we're giving you, all right? So we'll go through those pictures there. Hopefully that's kind of understood when we do that. We'll talk about the method. Uh, this can vary from class to class. Some teachers are real sticklers for um, the concepts that are being discussed and then applying those concepts to the problems they give you. Now, my understanding is if you understand the concepts we present, you can do it, good for you. Most people can't though. So I'm gonna claim what I like to do is, I like to do what's known as point translation. Look for characteristics on the parent and those characteristics should be on the child and we look for those characteristics. Now someone says, what do you mean characteristics? Nice things, all right? Nice, easy things. We'll talk about that today and then we'll reinforce this in the lecture. So I'm gonna say there's plenty of parents to know. Certainly you know lines, lines have lines for children. A, a, a child of a line is gonna look like a line. All right, so a quadratic, that's a you know, parabola for you guys. You know, parabolas will have children where they look like, they look like parabolas, all right? So this one over here is a cubic function. Yeah, you know, y equals, uh, it's a function f of x equals x cubed. Yeah, that's what a cubic looks like. And then we're gonna, you know, translate it a little bit, all right? When I say translate, move it around. He's gonna have children look just like the cubic. Now, again, there's some subtle variations here, but let's not worry too much about that. Square root function, Basically, it's a half a parabola. That's all it is, all right? We've seen those before. And we're just gonna move it around, all right? So we're gonna do a cubic function. This, what I, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say cubic, cube root function. It's basically looks like a cube function. It really does. It looks just like it. And this one over here, just like the square root look like a, a quadratic. Um, it's a simple wave problem. Um, typically, you're gonna see more waves when you get to math 120, which is that a trigger to my, Trig tri trigonometry, where you see periodic functions. And periodic functions are functions that keep repeating themselves over and over again. I wouldn't worry about saying I had to memorize a lot of things. What you need to do is understand concepts. And as you understand those concepts, we'll move forward to the example questions. I am gonna move to the whiteboard now though. And I'm gonna start talking more carefully about the notes. So give me one second. All right, so we're on the whiteboard. So I'm gonna start talking through the notes and I'm hoping you're gonna pay attention. You may not, <clears throat> excuse me, you may not understand everything, but you really do need to go back over what we're talking about and try to make sense out of it. Now, granted, we will go through examples, but before we go through examples, we need to discuss the material. So I'm looking at, you know, uh, section 4.2 and my claim over here, just, you know, kind of looking at it that I wanna discuss it a little bit at a time. So this one's gonna be vertical and horizontal shifts. A vertical shift 
is going to be moving things up and down. A horizontal shift is going to move things left or right. So I'm going to claim over here that it would be nice if you could think through this. But I got to be honest with you, when we're doing trans, uh, point translation, you know, it's going to be points that we're moving around. And it's going to be kind of obvious once we move those points around what happened. You know, was it shifted upwards like this? All right. Was it shifted downward? Was it shifted to the right? Was it shifted to the left? Let's look, look at the notes. And what I mean by that, I'm going to read it to you. It says, let C be some constant greater than zero. It's a positive number. And then let F be some function. All right. Let H be another function. All right. That's related to F. All right. Now, what I mean by related to F, F is a parent, H is the child. This is so typical. All right. So we're going to talk about vertical shift C units upward. So, you know, I'm going to say that H of X is related to F of X. What was it? It's just a vertical shift upwards. And if C is a positive number, this should sort of make sense to you. And what I mean by that is if you took the function F and added C to it, it would move it up C units. And this would be the child. That's all it is. Let's do the vertical shift downward. Again, generally speaking, pretty easy to understand. What are we saying? And again, C is a positive number. If you took the function F and you subtracted a number from it, it would push it down C units. So it's a downward motion. Now, yeah, yeah, master, for a lot of students, this is the tough one, right? And this is, why is it tough? Because people look at this and they don't think it makes sense, right? When we do points translation, no, this should make sense to you. Now, this is where some teachers are saying, well, they don't do point translation. They look at this and they try to say, oh, you really need to know that, all right? So what does it say? That if you took the argument X and subtracted C from it, you would be moving the curves C units to the right. Now, some people say, it doesn't make sense to me. When we do point translation, this should make pure sense to you, all right? Pure sense, all right? Right now, it may not. So I'm gonna say what happens is the, uh, the value of X that makes it the same as the parent well, then it would be, you know, like, for example, if, let's say the parent X started at zero for the parent, it was the characteristic of a start, um, you know, and you did X minus C, I'm going to say that would be C units to the right. Again, that might be tough to understand. I know that. We have the point translation through example. We're hoping that makes more sense to you. All right. This one over here, C units to the left. And that's over here. And that's going to be when you take the argument X and add C to it it's gonna shift the curve C units to the left. All right, let's go to the next page. Again, we'll hammer down these examples. Um, and I'm hoping they make more sense if we start moving through examples. Excuse me one second, I made a mistake there. So let's take a look. And let me look at the, um, the reflection in the x-axis, by the way. All right, we're just talking through it. Not saying you understand it yet. And we're gonna talk through this over here. Reflections in the coordinate axis. So as soon as the coordinate axis, what are you talking about? It's either gonna be a reflection about the x-axis or a reflection about the y-axis. So I'm hoping if you, again, if you gave it some thought, and that's what we're trying, what study is all about, giving it thought. If you give it some thought. And someone says, I don't give it some thought. How could I ever understand it? You're not gonna understand it. You've gotta give it some thought. So what are they saying that, you know, H is still related to the parent F, but we're rotating about the X axis, all right? So what I'm saying is to rotate it, you think about it, it would just be the opposite of F would rotate it about the X axis. And that's, again, we're talking about the trial of H. Now, if we're gonna rotate it about the Y axis, what are we working on the X then? What are we gonna do? It's the opposite of its argument. Again, that might be hard to understand, but again, when we get to the examples or doing point translation, this will hopefully be easy to understand. Hopefully, I really do. I hope it's easy to understand. All right, so I'm gonna to go to what's called a non-rigid transformation, non-rigid. Here comes the big problem. When you've got a bunch of things going on, including you know shifting left to right, up and down, rotations about the x-axis and the y-axis and non-rigid transformations. You got a lot of things going on. This can get pretty nasty. This is why I like Prime's translation so much. But before we get there, we're gonna talk about one simple topic at a time. First, we talk about vertical and horizontal shifting. 
Then we talked about the rotations about the coordinate axes. Now we're talking about a non-rigid transformation. It's basically going to be a compression or a stretching. Let me point this out to you. So again, we're going to be dealing with the graph F. This is a parent, and we're going to be stretching it or compressing it. This can occur both vertically and horizontally. All right. These types of transformations tend to be more difficult to understand. All right. Again, when I get the point translation, though, it should be kind of obvious what we're doing. Not a memorization skills, point translation. Point translation is much easier to deal with. I believe so anyway. But again, you be the judge. You study the material. You decide what works best. All right. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to try to, by point translation, I'm going to try to, that all, you know, memorization. I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to get, avoid it. I don't want to do that. All right. And I'm going to go move to simple point translation. Before we do that, it, it's good to think if you can think about a little bit at a time what, what's happening. And I, 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 I still think this is important, but I'm not going to try to memorize it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to visualize it. So I'm going to try to visualize these things separately. All right. Now, I want to point out the first one. What it does, it's twice the function. It's twice the function. What would happen to that? Again, I'm thinking if you thought about that in your mind, what would happen? It would be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. If you thought about the next one, which is 0.5 FX, that would be a vertical compression by a factor of two. But so this is why a factor of two, 0.5 is actually a half. It's shrinking it. All right. Now I gotta be honest with you, three and four might be more difficult. Number three is a horizontal, it's working on the X by this horizontal compression factor of two. We'll go to examples. Number four, it's working on the argument X, horizontal expansion by a factor of two. All right, let's go to the next page. We're looking at these pictures here. I wanna talk points with you. And I'm gonna say there's, at least for me, there's some characteristic points in this curve over here. This is a characteristic, this is a characteristic, this is a characteristic. I'm gonna say that's a characteristic, that's a characteristic. I wanna write down what those characteristics are to me though, looking at it. Again, I'm not saying these are absolutely accurate. I'm just saying it's good enough for me. So what's this point over here? And if I looked at that, I'm going to say that looks to me, and I'm going to be careful about this. I'm going to say it looks like four zero. I'm looking at my scale, by the way. If I'm looking at this one over here, and again, I, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm going to say this is maybe, I don't know, two point, let me see. Ah, 2.7 maybe. You might argue with me on that, comma. I'm looking up there, maybe, I don't know, 2.4. All right, this point here at origin, zero, zero. This point over here, and again, I'm just looking at this parent. I'm looking at the parent. This is f of x. If I don't know the parent, I'm not gonna know the children. What's this point over here? Well, I'm gonna say minus 2.7 comma minus 2.4. And what's this point over here? I'm going to say minus four comma zero. So what I want to do is I'll look at, you know, a child of this guy. And I got to be honest with you, the child also has four, I'm, I'm sorry, five characteristic points. I'll put them down for you. And I, I, I hope you know that they're related. I hope so. I hope you know that you look at that guy, you'd say, same family. All right, I'm gonna write the points down now. And I'm kind of looking at it. And I'm gonna say this point over here looks like four, zero. This point over here, uh, you know what? It's too difficult that point. Let's do this one over here. 
What's that point? It looks like minus four, zero. I'm doing easy, right? And what's this point over here? It looks like zero, zero. Let me look at this point. I don't know, maybe 2.7. That, that, I gotta be careful here. I'm gonna say 4.8. I'm gonna look at this guy over here. I'm gonna say minus 2.7, minus 4.8. Okay, let's look at it. My question is, what changed? I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't think these guys changed at all. Those three points didn't change. So I'm saying there was no, no shifting left or right. I didn't see any of that. I didn't see those points moved up or down either. But what I did was it appeared to be a stretching vertically. It appears that this kid of the parent F, H, this is, the, this is this what we call the H curve, has been stretched by a factor of two. Why do I look at that? Well, I wanna point out what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this thing over here and this over here. They've been stretched by a factor of two. I'm seeing that. All right, let's go to the next one. I know it's tough. You know what I wanna do though? I wanna take dear old dad with me. And just give me a second here. I'm gonna copy that guy and I don't lose track of him. Let's go to the next page. And I'm gonna take the old dad, he's in my wallet. And I'm gonna put him over here. I'm gonna blow this guy up. And this is another child. So I'm gonna look at the, I'm gonna look at the points again. And then this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm gonna write the points down for you. And again, I'm looking at the picture, right? So I'm gonna say, you know, this point, I look at the easy guys, minus four, zero. This point over here is four, zero. This point is zero, zero. This point over here looks about, I don't know, 2.7. Uh, let me take a look at that. I'm going to say about 1.2. I'm going to look at this one over here. Again, minus 2.7, kind of ballpark. And I'm not saying I'm doing a great job. And minus 1.2. I think you get the idea. So I'm saying this is definitely a child of dad. I look at the family. It's the same family. And I'm looking, was it moved left or right, up or down? No. Look at those three points. Right, minus four, zero, 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 four, zero, same point. What's happened though? It looks like there's a vertical compression by a factor of two. In other words, if you saw this 2.4 and someone look at this one over here, you'd say, oh, we took half of it. I, I, I shrank it down by a factor of two. All right, I shrank it down by a factor of two. All right, let's take a look at the next one. And again, I don't wanna lose sight of dad. I'm gonna put this down for you. Dad's gonna be coming along. He's got kids. Give me a second over here. By the way, if I do this to the kid, you might say the kid's getting really big or being twisted around. That's why I need a scale. I need that scale. All right, so I'm looking at it and I wanna do these points over here now. I'll point it out to you. The same points, if dad had five points, the kid's got five points. And I wanna stick with the easy ones. All right, I'm gonna do, let's see. This guy here looks, I'm looking at, I'm gonna say two zero. This guy over here, minus two zero. And this guy's zero, zero. I wanna explain this again. If I do something like this, I'm not changing the scale on the x or y axis. You might say the picture's getting busy, it's making me dizzy, but the numbers aren't changing. All right, let's keep going. I'll look around for more. I'm gonna look at this guy and this guy. And I'm gonna say, you know, I'm not saying I'm accurate at this. I'm just saying I'm getting kind of better at this. And I'm gonna say like minus 
1.4. And then I'm going to say that that looks about minus 2.4. And this guy over here, say about minus, not minus, that's crazy, 1.4, go backwards. 2.4. All right. So again, I'm, I'm looking at the parent and I'm wondering, you know, it, it, it doesn't appear to be moved left or right because I'm looking at that origin point. It's still there. But what, what does it look like? It looks like the thing has been squeezed along the x-axis by a factor of two. I'm hoping you can see that. So for example, this point here has now become this point here. And that's a factor of two. I mean, the dab was at four. This kid's at two. And if you looked at this point over here, and I'm seeing this, I hope your eyes been squeezed in. And these points too have been squeezed in, all right? Where was it before, you know, 2.7? Well, if I really squeezed it in by a factor of two, it'd be 1.35, but you know, I'm, I'm ballparking it. I hope that's not too difficult for you, all right? Again, we're asking you to think. And that takes time and effort, all right? I want to take dear old dad with me again, because maybe there'll be another transformation, who knows? And we'll go to the next page. I got another one. And I'm going to paste dear old dad again. There he is. And let's see up to this guy. All right. And again, I'm going to, you know, sort of like look at him and don't worry what I'm doing with the picture. I just want to put some points down for you. And this one, and this one. And I think I can put them down pretty quickly. Whoops, sorry about that. I think you know what I'm doing, I'm looking, right? This is super simple, this one here. The other guy's a little bit annoying though, I'll be honest with you. Let's see. I got to do this carefully, don't I? I'm looking. Over here somewhere. Whoops, go blue. I'm going to say about 5.4 about. And the Y looks about 2.4. Let's do the other point over here somewhere. And I'm gonna put that down for you now. Minus 5.4, minus 2.4. Now, again, I hope you're looking at the parent and the kid, right? The parent's F and this is the kid, he's related to the parent, hopefully the same family. What happened? It appears there was a stretching along the x-axis now, not along the y, along the axis. What's happened? It's been doubled, all right? Again, we're hoping you can do that, that you can look at a picture and really transformations. The reason the pictures are being labeled for you is we want you to look at that as well, all right? Let's talk about method, all right? Okay, we're gonna be faced with a lot of simple functions that are called parents, and parents have children all right, the children will look like the parent, but they're still gonna be children of the parent. It's not easy when we're faced with several factors that transform it, all right? So it's not easy when there's several factors that are transforming it. So what I plan to do, and this will be done through example, just like I did before with the pictures, I am going to look for characteristic points that are simple, and we'll look at pictures to do that on the parent, by the way. And then what we're gonna do is gonna wonder how are those characteristic points connected together? It should be a simple connection, nothing too difficult, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the child and wonder how is it related to the parent by those key characteristic points? We need to find those characteristic points. Once we find the characteristic points though, what we're gonna do is connect the dots, okay? Let's talk about the next topic, which are gonna be parent graphs. Now, some of the parent graphs you're not gonna recognize, 
But just like in real life, you see people and um, hopefully they're unique enough where you look at the person and that you could probably, especially if their children are, you know, I would say, you know, moving towards, you know, the later teenage years, early adulthoods, they probably should look like the parent. All right. Now, granted, there is a difficulty with, with people because there's competition. What I mean by that, there's a mother, father, and the kid may look more like the mother, more like the, uh, the father, but you get an idea that the kid looks like someone completely different. I think you got some suspicions there. So I'm going to blame it. I want my kids to look just like me. Okay. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about these pictures over here, right? I want these kids to look like the parents. So let's take a look at them. Let them what these parents look like. Well, I got to be honest with it. Lines, when they have children, they should look like lines, all right? They should look like lines. Now, what could you do with a line? You can move it up, you can move it down, you can move it left, you can move it right, but you could also do some kind of scaling feature like stretching it, compressing it, things like that. Basically, what you'd be doing is changing the slope of the line, all right? That can happen. You can change the slope of the line. All right, what's the next guy you're gonna be dealing with? Parabolas. When a parabola has a child, it's gonna look like a parabola. All right, we're gonna do very simple transformations, by the way. And the key characters we point in this year is it's always gonna be the vertex. And you can move the vertex around. And again, you move it around. Could be move left, could be move right, could be move up, move down. And the general shape of the curve could be changed. Could be rotate about the x-axis, rotate about the y-axis, and it could also be stretched. All right, when I say stretch, I'm also including compressions. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. Now, by the way, you may not be familiar with this guy over here. This was known as a cubic function. And what does a cubic function look like? Well, it looks like this. Now, granted, the cubic will have children. Sometimes the children, you might say stuff really don't look like cubic, but cubics pretty much look like cubics, right? Parent curve being X cubed, children curves look just like X cubed, all right? There are subtle variations though, and we'll get to that when we start graphing in more detail. But right now we're just moving things around, up, down, left, right, and some kind of a, a stretching or maybe rotations. Simple rotation though, about the X and about the Y, all right? What's this guy over here? I'm gonna claim looking at it, it's a square root function, but I gotta be honest with you, this really looks like half of a parabola to me. Don't looks like half a parabola. What do we do? We move left, right, up, down, we could rotate about the x-axis, rotate about the y-axis, and we could also do stretching and compressing. All right, let's go to the next page. Next page, this is what's known as a cube root function. What does that look like? It actually looks like a cubic to me, but that's a cube root function. That's written right over here. What are we gonna do with that? Move it up, move it down, move it left, move it right. Maybe rotate about the x-axis, Rotate about the y-axis and some stretching. I will say this though, you should have a pretty good understanding of moving left, right, up, down, rotating about the x, rotating about the y, what they would look like. It's the stretching that keeps going and that, that can get tough. What's the last guy we have? It's a simple wave. And what's a simple wave look like? Well, it's really not bad. A simple wave looks like this over here. And yes, I'm tracing over my curves. Uh, the reason we give you good curves and so you can look at those good curves. If someone said, you know, what are the characteristics in this curve over here? I'd say this is a characteristic point. This would be characteristic. This one, this one, this one, this point over here, this point over here. So this is why'd you choose those points? They're characteristic. So what I choose X and Y intercepts. If I can see them, I can clearly see them. And these things over here, which I want to point out what I'm looking at over here, this is a local maximum and this is a local minimum. This is a local maximum. This is a local minimum. They're pretty easy to do. So what are we gonna do next? We'll go through the example questions. We're hoping as we go through the example questions that you've paid enough attention that you know the example questions are related to what we just discussed. Thank you.